All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. There we go. Awesome. Okay. To today's semi-finals and final cast from the Tigers Gold Plat tournament. And we will just straight start and jump into game number one of this best of five. We have spawning in the top right position of Galactic Process. Playing for Team Kings, it is the Green Zerg for Bali. And he's fighting against the Red Terran, spawning in the bottom left hand side of Galactic Process. Also playing for Team Kings, it is Nemiator. Going for gas first currently. So we will have a team kill. Wow, one of those guys has to kick one of their teammates out of the tournament in order to advance to the next level. Also, thank you everybody for tuning in. I do hope you enjoy. Thank you so much, Blood Templar One, for following. I really appreciate it. And I really hope you like the stream. So for Balin is going for a typical hatch gas and we sure soon should see Wow a pool sure should soon see those are three words starting with uh, four words starting with unless oh wow <laughs> There's the spawning pool Soon see I don't get it. Uh, again. Ah, damn it. Sure, should, soon, see, spawning pool. Bam, 5S. Wow. Okay, and Nemiator going for the. Uh, he's making some weird paintings with his SCV. Uh, but he goes for the command center here, Reaper, standard stuff. Quite nicely. SCVs are quite stacked as well, which is good. And goes for the barracks. At around the two minute mark, skipping a little bit the SV and the mule. Which is a small mistake. There we go. Come on. Oh, he skips this SV way too long in order to get the factory. There's the reactor. He will need a supply depot soon. But for now, he's fine. Still skipping the SV. What's going on? Nemiator. A little bit flustered here. There we go. And for Balin, going with the speed, for circlings, two keens, that is really standard stuff. Let's see how much damage this Reaper can find. A nice KDA charge. Oh, don't lose the Reaper, this is very dangerous. The speedlings are a little bit faster. 5.3, yeah, they're a little bit faster than the Reaper, but he gets two kills there. And needs to be very careful, oh, oh, gets killed here. Oh no, Queen! Stop it! Stop it! The Queen is angry on the hatchery. Nah, there you go. <laughs> ah, first you attack, then you spit on it. That's that's okay. That's what Zerks do. So yeah, for Bali needs to. Hmm. As he got the Reaper, he doesn't really have to go for four more circlings. But it's okay. Better safe than sorry. Speed and the pneumatized. Pneumatized. Carapace, that word is so... Pneumatized Carapace, there we go. Overlord Speed Upgrade. Uh, which is really good. And Nemiator looks like going for the 16 Marine Medivac drop. Awesome. A very standard opening. And still very viable. I would say that's the most meta build you can currently play. And yes, we should soon see the double medivax as soon as he got the gas. And I wonder what for Balin is gonna do here. Roach one, that's solid. So if you get enough roaches, like roaches and queens are really good early on for defense against this uh, double medivac drop. However, if your creep spread is not good enough. The follow-up with the two more medivacs and two tanks can be devastating. So you need to be aware of that. 
The medivacs are out. There are not enough marines currently. Only 11? 12? You wanna have 16. Maybe 8 turn. So, is he gonna wait? I don't think you should wait. You want to hit a timing. Oh, what are you doing? You wanna hit a timing? Yeah, there you go. Boost across the map. Faster, faster, faster. Micro harder. For Barlin only having two roaches and two queens so far in position. He's going for the double evo chamber. Okay. But hmm, that's the difficulty. The hatchery is not connected with the natural. And there's the drop. Stim will be done soon as well. And this hatch is taking so much damage. The speedlings, oh, they did nothing. Two roaches here also won't do much. And yeah, this hatch is just dead. Or is it? Ooh! Barely survives. Not the best focus fire. Could have gunned it down. Drops on top of the queen. Stims again. Gets it! Oh! Prevents the spinning again. The inject. Good focus fire on the roaches. And now going for the drones. Killing so much here. Really nice damage so far. And only losing 8 marines. So that's fine. And going back and killing potentially the third. Wow. That is really nice. You should get it. Mm, guns down this one, Roach. There's a Liberator joining now. And does he get the hatch? Oh, so close. He doesn't quite get it. But there's the Liberator. Killing the eggs potentially. The lava, the drones of course. Oh, get so much damage done here. The Roaches are fighting inside of the Liberation Zone. Yeah, they get liberated so hard. There is only one Ravager, which is not enough. Look at all the damage the Liberator is doing. Wow. But the Hatchery survives so far. But for how long? That's the big question. It is so low. And for Balin has a lot of overmints. He needs to spend his minerals. ASAP. Maybe he should also transduce the hatchery, but he's not really producing much. He got also only 3 larva. He lost just way too much. He's on 22 drones now against 31 SCVs. There's a third command center going down as well. I will love Nemeator going for combat shields here, uh, but I don't even think he might need it. He should not attack into this, into this many roaches. Could be, could be a mistake. Mm. Oh, I find so many overlords. And a queen. Mm, not the worst status that Micro. And he's finding some damage, but not that much currently. Dropping into the main base. Liberator still at the front. Not doing much. And yeah, those... The def for Balin's defense looks looks quite solid so far. Oh, but this hatchery. It just might go down. If Namiator goes for it. He's a little bit supply cap. Command center will fix this. And there he goes. Dropping bad reinforcements. Production is there. And he loses all the marines. And the hatchery survives. What? Wow. For Balin is not out yet. If he would go, he, he should produce queens now. Queens and just drone up a little bit while you get army. More and more armies, play it safe until you got uh, three base economy up again. If Nemiator continues to throw away his units like he just did, and you would m macro out of it, that would be so helpful. Get more queens, come on, you got the money. He got the money. And he definitely should produce some queens here. And not wasting surplings like that. You can't afford that. You simply cannot. For Balin will be behind two upgrades soon. Mm, there we go. Double upgrades for, for Balin. Nice. But still, he needs more queens, more injects, more lava. Spend your money, get a macro hatch. Even though it's expensive for you because you would need a drone for it, but still. It is worth it. You got some time. He's working on his creep spread, which is good. 
but he's not droning up at all. He doesn't have a Baneling Nest against the Marines. There we go. Come on. Maybe inject the main as well. If only he would get more queens. There we go. Two more queens. That should help out. Like, if he would go up to eight queens, he could gun down all the Medivacs. While the Roaches and the Ravager and the Circlings try to trade against the Bio. It's not the best thing you can do, but if you can hold strong on top of the ramp with the Queen's Transfusers and such, that would be really helpful. But I fear it will be too late. 26 Circlings coming out soon, uh, but they don't have upgrades. And Nemiator hits a really nice 1-1 one -one timing here. Good follow-up push. Clears some creep. And he just might go up this ramp. Maybe not. Uh, goes up the ramp right now. Nice kiting back. Luring the Zerg army off creep. Corrosive Biles hitting something, but most, mostly the own army. Wow. Namiator uh, pulling the game Richie here. Still to win. And there he goes. Kills all of Four Valiant's army. GG is called. And Namiator wins game number one. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number two of this best of five. Spawning in the bottom right hand side of the new Gettysburg Letter Edition. Playing for Team Kings, it is the Green Sir for Bali. And he's playing against the Red Terran, currently up one game. Spawning in the bottom left hand side. Also playing for Team Kings, it is Nemiator. Going here with the gas first again. And there's the barracks. So in the last game for Balin said he was lagging a little bit hard. So he was lagging a lot. I don't know how much this did uh, affect him in the game. Potentially a lot. Maybe now it's better. And for Balin, maybe he can bring it back. Would be nice to see more TVC action today. The drone goes in, can prevent the command center from going down for quite a little bit of time at least, which is really annoying. But does decide to go up the ramp and scout what's going on. And doesn't see too much, to be honest. So there's the command center, spawning pool, gas, but he didn't saturate the gas so far, which is a little bit concerning. I think for Balin is just way too busy microing his drone. And those are mistakes that can cost you the game. I mean, he's banking up so many minerals. Sure, he can go for four circlings and double queen, but then still, he can't fire up speed. Oh, he misses a queen. There we go, eight circlings in total. And the Reaper goes in, will be greeted by... Only one circling, good focus fire, kills the drone, very nicely done, and gets a circling as well. Awesome, might even get another drone kill here. This reaper doing some serious work in the circ space. And gets maybe another circling, uh, maybe not, doesn't want to risk it, smart decision. It's better to not lose the reaper. 
Come on, Sinter finishes up. And we are seeing the same style again. Oh, this Overlord is so dead. Poor little guy. That's my action cam. Let's see if Namiator can hit this timing a little bit better this game. Now speed fin uh, is, is on the way. And the strange part of this is normally speed should finish right now. For Barley went for a lot of circlings early on which she doesn't really need. And it's just now droning up. He, he can be fine, I guess. He can be fine. But will he be fine? Creep spread starts, that's also, always uh, uh, very important to do. You need the creep spread. Get the creep going ASAP. Like, of course, prioritize your inject over the creep spread, I would say. At least early on. But still, creep is so important. And for Balin finally deciding to get himself a third base. Thank you, Ed Payasugu. Ed Payasugu for following. I hope that was pronounced correctly. Nope! He doesn't go for the hatch. Ooh, why would you do that? <gasps> for Balin. And the drone goes back again. And there's my action cam. What is this drone doing? Potentially. Come on! There we go. And this time Namiator is hitting the timing quite nicely. 60 Marines, 2 Medivacs. He only grabs one. No! <laughs> there we go. Uh, pulls the second one. Really nice. Really nice. The Circling however scouted it. I guess. At least the second Medivac. Will he be prepared? There are only four queens and seven circlings. The Roach Warren is late. He's not producing a lot of circlings. He could, however, and he needs to do something. This this push, if not greeted by a lot of army, can deal devastating potential game-ending damage. And here we go. Stim is ready. Stim to win. Oh, he's going for the queens. Both queens are falling. Will he scan for the... Yes, he scans for the creep tumors. Both creep tumors get sniped. All of them, to be honest. And there are only circlings here. Good position with the stim of the marines. The queen not enough, the circling not enough. Gets killed here. Oh my god, is it? Ooh, he goes in with the marines. More marines, and there we go. Oh! Ah! GG! <laughs> wow. I need to work on my Korean caster. Oh, ah, GG. That's, I need some work. But it is, it is, can be really funny. <laughs> They have this this timing so good. Uh, I love it. If if you have if you watch Korean casters and they do this and there are two in I think on on Korean streams there are not two but three caster sometimes. Which is really weird. It is it is really weird, in my opinion. Having three caster, I think it's a little bit too much. But who knows, if only I could speak Korean, if only I could speak Korean, that would be so nice. Have to learn it, but I don't know. However, let's go into game number 3 of this best of 5, spawning in the bottom right position of King Zhejiang Station as the Red Terran playing for Team Kings, currently up 2 games, it is Nemiator. And he's playing against the Green Zerg, spawning in the top left hand side of King Zhejiang Station, also playing for Team Kings. It is for Bali. It looks like Namiator is just a stronger player, but oh, for Bali going with the cheese, and that's nice. That is that is really nice. I love the decision from for Bali to. Yeah, to switch it up. Go for something else. He tried to macro two times and it didn't work out for him. And now he's like, okay, screw it. I have to do something else. And he goes in with the proxy hatchery. However, 
I think it would have been smart, more, smarter to get the props surgery right here. And then with the spines, kill the debris, go up with queens and roaches, bust through and just hit before the timing. But we will see what he is up to. I still think we might see the spine crawler rush, as I would call it now. And because this command center is on the low ground, potentially it could deny or even force a cancel. Very interesting position of the second barracks, so... Okay. So, and now the problem is the Reaper scouts it. He sees the creep because of the position of the hatchery. And if the hatch would be behind the debris, he wouldn't potentially scout it at all. And we do see six circlings, two queens out of four Barleen. A spine crawler goes down. Right in the fr at the front of the space. That's good. And yeah, the Reaper will scout. Not too much actually, to be honest. Oh, almost gets us around with the drones. And the Queen should pop out now. And all those drones should be fine. But maybe he gets one. Yeah, good focus fire gets one drone. Might opt for another one. But don't want to lose the Reaper. And he loses the Reaper. Only one spine crawler so far. The command center does finish. Gets lifted into mid-air and mm, for Balin banking up a lot of minerals again so he needs to spend his money ASAP get the creep going you need the creep spread don't inject another time you need the creep come on this queen is for creep only Mamiator can now yeah he goes into reactor okay but he can defend this if he gets a bunker potentially will be fine there is still no creep spread going on. No! Why would you creep into to the left side? You wanna creep up? I, I think that's a huge mistake. For Bali definitely should creep up the ramp. The circlings are not doing anything for you. Yeah, you wanna get roaches. Okay. And, and contain him as much as possible. Creep up the entire natural. That's, that's your goal. And after you achieve that... You can go and, and go to the third base, start your creep all over the place. What he's doing now is not committing. For Balin, is not really committing that much. He's going for his natural now and might just drone up behind it. It can work, but uh, yeah, that's the thing. If he would have creeped better, the spines would be right here now. Could prevent the orbital from landing because this is now doing nothing. It is not really putting any pressure on, on Namiator. Namiator gets the Marines with the Stim. And Marines with Stim can kill this. Eventually. Not with the first push in. But eventually. They will get this. Ah, Liberator gets done. Gets being produced, that's good. And potentially tanks as well. There we go, Marines just poking a little bit here. Another spine crawler gets built. This creep tumor should die. Oh, and because of the circling, it might. Ooh. Without the circling, maybe Namiator would not have known. Yeah, behind the rocks. Like here. Right here. Then you don't scout it with the Reaper. And there is the Liberator attacking the Queen. 80 damage, 85 damage already. And there's the double drop. Oh. Now let's see what happens. Nemiator decides to move out, but has a tank back at home. And there's nothing for, for Barling to defend. This could get really dicey for, for Barling. Uh, the Spine Crawler gonna die soon. Double drop hits as well. Killing all the drones. Stim to win. Potentially the hatchery goes down for Barlin. Lol. GG. And Namiator takes the sweep. Clear. 3 0.
So, Nemeator will be in the finals. But now let's go into the other semi final. It is a TVP. And we start on Frozen Temple. Okay. Spawning in the bottom right hand side. Playing for the Drunken Outlaws as the Yellow Protoss. It is Lüblix. And he's playing against the Green Terran spawning on the top left hand side of Frozen Temple. Playing for himself it is FIFO. Lüblix here with the really fast scout. This scout is super early. Even before the gate he goes with the probe scout. And FIFO only quite an early scout. You don't need to scout that early normally in TVP. Uh, Neither is Protoss nor is Terran, so. Nor. Uh, nor neither? Neither nor? Who knows? But yeah, this probe didn't see too much. It wasn't able to get in because of FIFO's supply depot block, which he loves to do. He delays a little bit the barracks, but. It, it, is, it is okay. I wouldn't recommend this build order, but if you definitely want to block scouting, you can do it like that. And he goes in with a really early... yeah, he opens up three racks. And this SV did scout everything so far. Double gas, sees the cybernetics core, all the SV needs to confirm. Uh, to do is to confirm if there is a nexus or not. So far it gets attacked by the probe with the particle beam. And the SV has the fusion cutter. And there we have a proxy pylon. Oh, Löblix. He wants potentially to cheese or all in. Or maybe both. We will see soon. But, uh oh. No, this SCV can't. Oh, wow! Wow! Those Jedi senses, man. He sees the pylon. He just spotted it. And now, Löblix, what, what are you gonna do? It has been spotted. You can't really produce or build anything here. Especially against the three racks opening. So it is still one base against one base. Mothership core finishes. Nexus will get thrown down. At least. Could. But goes with the pylon first. There's a pylon block as well. I don't like that against Terran. Against Zerg, yes it can work. But against Terran... They just tend to produce, uh, to get the command center uh, at the side, next to the pylon. And those 100 minerals did nothing for Lerblix. Nothing. Interestingly, the unit loss tabs only shows the resources loss uh, for the units, and the structures loss tab doesn't show the resources loss at all. Very interesting. So this pylon... The fusion cutter is on. Cut it. Cut it hard. And eventually the pilot might just go down as well. The three wrecks opening now. FIFO is moving across the map. Two Marauder and seven Marines. There's no Nexus so far. Only one pilot, but the Mothership Core in position still not done. And uh oh. Pilot overcharge. Pilot overcharge! Okay, that's a good trade, I would say, for Protoss. Gets. Only one Marauder. Wow! I would have thought more units would die there. But somehow FIFA manages to do really well against this pylon. And now this pylon is so dead. And this pylon gonna die soon as well. There are a lot of adapts. Still not ready yet, but concussive shells however. Mm, photon overcharge. That's the last one for quite some time. Not the best focus fire. The mother should call dies. But there should be enough adapts to clean this bioforce. And FIFO is also just one base. More adapts warped in, being warped in, so. Lüblix is playing some kind of foregate with a robotics facility, and he's going with the Twilight Council, but still being one base. However, those adapts, they could deal a lot of damage. 
There we go. Bye bye, Pylon. Three Pylons died so far in this game. Rip Pylon. Rip Brino. Yeah, those those few units will get eaten alive by those adepts as well. And the bunker is not ready yet. There is not much. Only one Marauder, four Marines against six adepts and soon an immortal, maybe at the front as well. There's the immortal. There it is. Bunker gets cancelled, the command center will get cancelled as well. Yeah, there we go. Had to be the case. And Lüblix behind taking his own nexus now looking quite solid so fifo with the starport now getting some gas at least stim ready concussive shells ready he wants to get combat shields is now producing some turrets uh yeah they are not doing anything Sadly for him. They would be nice against War Prison play, but they are spread out too far in my opinion, first of all. And second of all, there is no War Prison coming. And those three mar Marines, they might just die as well. The Adept is faster than the Marine, look at that. 3.5 against 3.15. Wow. So the Adept is somewhat of a sprinter. I feel like this bunker will be too late as well. With the Adept Shade he can go here and attack a lot of stuff. Which he's currently not doing. But there is an Observer which he can use for vision as well to kill this bunker. And behind that Lüblix has his Nexus up. And he will start to saturate it. And that's looking good for him. It's really looking good for him. But Lüblix is going back. So whoever... ...wins this. So far... ...I can't tell. Ah, uh, really nice, saving the Observer. I, I think it's still in vision range of the turret. Ah, turret gets cancelled here, gets potentially killed. Maybe not, Stim comes in, Bunker not ready yet. Oh, way too aggressive onto the, uh, on that Immortal. He gets it, however, but... Will he be able to hold on? I don't think so, he's not using the Bunker to his advantage. The bunker gets all that just in time. Wow, so close. Uh, but yeah, Lüblix is now doubling the supply of FIFO. Eventually he might just win this. But for now FIFO is holding on. But how long can he do this? That's the big question. How long can he hold on? FIFO tries to get the bunker up again, but that's not gonna happen. Again cancelled, base denied. And if this continues, then Lüblix will just win this. He can out macro FIFO. There are no tanky vex as well, nor widow mines. So FIFO would definitely benefit from using the factory in this game. Tanky vex, I think, would be better. Yes, there are observer. Uh, the Glaives upgrade did finish up as well as Blink, and now we see Colossus with the extended uh, Thermal Lands. Eventually, maybe, Lublix wants to use the Forge. He got the Warp Prism now at the front as well, he's supply capped, but his army looks strong. And FIFO never 
went into an orbital command with his natural command center. That's a huge mistake. So Lyplex is taking a third base here now. And as you can see at, at the production tab, it really shows who is up ahead currently in this game. Lyplex with a, another good warp in of adepts and they should just be enough to kill it. This bunker at the top is at a really nice position. But sadly the bottom bunker not ready for now. And again, this base might just get lifted. Bunker gets killed. There's the lift. It's just way too much Lublix here for FIFO. Way too much Lublix. And he taps out with the GG. Lublix taking game number one. Welcome back D4 Dan, at Crazy Jack, Blood Templar 1 and Connor for watching today's cast of this tournament, the Tiger's Gold Plat Tournament. Yeah, Liberator would have been nice, you're totally right. Or maybe Tanky Vex as well. So let me set up the score. Lublix won game number one and here we have him as the yellow Protoss playing for the drunken outlaw spawning in the top right hand side of galactic process it is Lublix and he's playing against a green Terran who just lost the last game spawning in the bottom left hand side playing for himself it is FIFO and there's the Oh, this time the probe gets in. Mmm, nasty, nasty, nasty. So, FIFO can't block the scout of Lurplex in this game. Let's see what Lurplex decides to do. So far, he's just on control, uh, patrol command. And there's SUV scouting. It is a gateway. It's a magnetic score, double gas. And what will we see for FIFO? He didn't go for any gas in this game. So if it is three racks, I think it is a Rex expand. So one Rex expand, gas gasless expand you can say as well. And this marine should potentially kill the probe. <laughs> Still no nexus for Lublix, but he might just soon get one, or not, we don't know. In the last game he, were, he was on one base for quite some time. And it worked out for him. Maybe he goes in with the proxy pylon again and this time it won't get scouted. But here we see nexus will be produced. Time for my action cam. FIFO going with the double gas and some additional barracks. Only one so far. I think he wants to get a second one. Or is he going to get greedy with a fairly soon, super early command center, a third one? No, there's the barracks. Okay, I think that's a smart choice. Especially as he did see the nexus. And three wrecks can deal some damage. Yes. Oh, this probe. Kills the, kills the uh, marine, kills the probe. Nice. And we do see a twilight council. Okay. So that's the tech choice for Lublix so far. And an engineering bay for FIFO. Well, he didn't open up with a reaper. So he doesn't exactly know what's going up. He just knows it is a nexus. But still, behind that, it could be the T's, it could be Oracle, and if you don't scout enough, then you better go blind into an eBay before you lose. 
especially when you are going into a lot of add-ons first and don't have the production currently to keep up. Just imagine an oracle would fly in soon, like now for example, that there is nothing to defend, only three marines in a bunker, which is not in position to deal with an oracle. And there we have the DT shrine, and just then we see the turrets going up. So one at the edge of this base, one behind the mineral line, one at the front. So there is quite some detection for FIFO. And only now we see the robotics facility. So the robotics facility... Yeah... I think normally you want to hit the timing where you have the warp prism heading into the base exactly when you can warp in the T's or you want to have it right here to warp in the T's, go in, drop one of them maybe two, go in with a third one into the natural which you just warped in and then warp in a bunch of adapts or something like that can be a very powerful build but Möblix only having two gates so far, he needs a third one, there we go gets a pile in himself there as well that is really nice uh, he does have the mothership core, yes, that's that's good for him. And yeah, now the DT shrine finishes up, but the warp prism will just be produced. And the DTs, they get warped in at the front, where they don't do much currently. And now there's a lot of bio for FIFO. He's a little bit supply blocked, but he's getting turrets everywhere. Also, this turret is in a very nice spot, I would say. So he's he's quite safe. Blink for Löblix as the follow-up. And that's quite typical. Normally, at least in Heart of the Swarm, you had Blink into DTs if it was two base. And in Legacy of the Void, if you got the Twilight Council, definitely use it. The scan revealing the DT shrine, and now FIFA should feel really safe. He got so many turrets. Where do I see the turrets? There. Like six turrets. And there is one more coming up. Almost no way to drop in here. Tools have a lot of range. Range 7. That's huge. And there you go. The longbow missiles killing the war prison. Only two DTs escape. And that was expensive. This turret dealt a lot of damage. And yeah, there's everywhere detection. No concussive shells so far, but... Yeah, that was expensive for one marine. And... Two SUVs, he lost four DTs and one war prison. Wow. But Löblix is going with the third base now. And that's good. The third base definitely could help him. But can he defend the upcoming push? That's the big question. There is double orbital for FIFO. So he might have just enough scans for the defensive DTs to kill those. We will see what happens here. We just will see. There's the drop. <laughs> Immediately cancels the Nexus, knowing he can't defend it. A huge warp in, but only adapts, no DTs, the bio gets dropped. There's the stim. There we go, but I think it's just enough Lurplex here to defend. But with good focus fire, oh, he's going for the Twilight Council. I don't know if that's the right move here. Mm, forcing one port on overcharge, but the Twilight Council? Mm, okay, Storm will be late now. So that's, that's nice, but... I'm not quite sure if that was the right call here. Oh, the Adepts and the Stalker on the chase. Nice blink. But the Stalker still might just die. Too many Adepts here. You need to pick up your units. Don't want to waste all the Marauder. Don't lose the Marauder. Wow, oh, so close this one. Almost died there. But nice, nice micro, nice race. And FIFA is ahead. He's supply cap currently. No, he's not. He will be soon. Um, but this, this push... This non-stop aggression can work out. Combat shields will finish now. The observer sees this. There are no sentries. 
There are pylons, however, but the Mothership Core is out of position. Big stim in, good focus fire on the Immortal. And now he steps in, hitting the gateway here, the warp gate a little bit. That's not so good. Uh, scans for the case of TTs. The pylon is helping out a lot. And this gets hold. Oh, losing this medivac hurts as well a lot. And Lurplex, so far, doing not a bad job at all. See a forge, we do see a command center for FIFO. And whoever wins this? We don't know yet. Interestingly, he goes double starport, but the second starport has a reactor as well. So no liberator range upgrade. And in the meantime, Lurplex uh, rebuilt the Twilight Council, and now he's going for the storm. Temple Archive, Storm potential. He got so much, so so much gas in his bank. So Storm is definitely a good thing to do. His upgrades are not looking too solid. I would love if he would have an observer right here. That would help so much. And there we go. Awesome. That's that's how you do it. The DT going for the Watchtower. Also good. For vision, doesn't quite see the Medivex. There are three photon overcharges available here. And we do see a cannon and a pylon coming up. Did Lurplik spot this? Storm is on the way. I think he just somehow spotted it. Maybe the Medivex went over the pylon. But who knows. A multi prong attack. I like that idea. Stim to win, he stims in, goes for the gate, he should go for the mothership core, and he gets it! Just one photon overcharge can be activated here, uh, but now he needs to turn back. And he boosts away, huge warping out of Lurplex. And FIFA is supply capped a little bit here. Not fully using the double starport so far, but Liberator could help out. Liberator are useful against High Templar as well, so that's good. And finally, kills the Destructible. Welcome everybody to my stream, hope you enjoy. Yeah. Hello, Elmas. Welcome. Yeah, sometimes there are events for lower league player as well. This drop idling around for like two minutes already. But FIFA had enough. He's going in. He pushes out. His upgrades are looking quite solid, I would say. But there is Storm. And <laughs> Storm is difficult to handle in higher leagues already. Now imagine how difficult it is to play against Storm in lower leagues, and there are six Psy Storms available for loop leagues. And this drop gets... Ah, does he get it? Almost. Almost. Because of the pylon he got the vision. The pylon will get killed, but still, getting two medivacs full of units, that's, that's worth it. And now he sees it. Because of the observer, I guess? No, he pulled it back. The adept's fighting here as well, but somehow he knows. Maybe he saw it with that observer. And yeah, you can't attack into that. Ooh, that distraction. He did see the cannons. And Fifu might just go for the main base, and that's a really smart move. The immortal might just die here. Ah, it survives, but this drop. Okay. Liberator killing the probes, huge drop into the main base. If he could kill the Dark Templar Shrine or the Nexus or both, that would be awesome. Probes get pulled, but the Liberator dealt so much damage already. He gets the pylon, gets the robotics bay, the cybernetics cord, that's huge! And he's just dealing so much damage. Uh, if only the Liberator would lock down the ramp. And his army is split up, not fighting at all. There we see the first storm coming down, very good feedback. Almost killing a second medivac, the blink will do it. Uh, not the best trade here, 
but he dealt quite some damage and his macro behind was really solid so it is okay. He dealt really good damage overall. The probes still pulled from the mineral line. The nexus looks... No, it's fine. I just thought maybe it's misplaced but it's totally fine. I don't think Lublix can move out across the map. Welcome everybody to my stream and today's cast. Those Blink Stalker have plus two upgrade, attack upgrade, so that's really good. But there are the storms. The storms will be huge. Oh, the bio gets eaten alive. Oh, wow. Just imagine you, you stay in a storm where you get hit by lightning bolts all the time. This must hurt so much. The RDT is here in order to defend and if there is no scan... Oh, there we go. Nice scan. Gets it. We will have some stupid base trade scenario. And the army supply is looking quite equal. But I just feel with the Liberator, FIFO will have enough to defend here. Where are the storms? Where are the storms? Storm! He doesn't storm. At all. And now the, the High Templar are alone. Oh no. He missed that opportunity. <laughs> the last storm was not that bad, but it's not enough. I don't think he can't defend here. So many High Templar. They, they need to kite with storm. Nice feedback, but... Uh, okay, morphing them into... No, merging them into Archons. But here we go. GG, Lublix taps out and FIFA wins game number two in this best of five. Really well done. And here we are, game three of this best of five series. Oh yeah. Spawning in the bottom right hand side, playing for the drunken outlaws as the yellow Protoss. It is Lublix. And he's playing against the green Terran spawning in the top left hand side of Apotheos' Letter Edition. Playing for himself the green Terran, FIFO. So Lurplex is going in with the early probe scout again. And on a map that big, welcome Frago. Hope you enjoy. Uh, and on that map, yeah, it is okay. It's a very large map. And we did see some really strange cheese on this map in TVP. There is uh, three wrecks, four wrecks, proxy starport liberator, proxy starport Benji, proxy tank marine liberator push with cyclones, proxy cyclone. There is a lot of openings you can play on this map, and oh, what? Why would you attack the refinery? Probe, stop it! Stop it! You're gonna die! Poor probe. Rip probe. Rip. Ah, uh, maybe this SCV might die now. No, FIFA is on top of it. Gonna micro it. And will scout the Nexus, which is really important. And FIFA going with the... <laughs> there you go! Four barracks! Wow! So I, I really wonder if this 4-4x four, four can deal damage here. On a map that big, sticking on one base and not proxying anything is basically saying you don't want to win this game. <laughs> Normally. 
Um, but we will see. Maybe some sometimes openings like that just surprisingly do well. And it could be the case here as well. We do see the concussive shells. If he pushes out early enough, maybe maybe he can do good against Lurblix. Mm, but there is the Mothership Core, and Pylons are really good early on. So FIFO is moving out, he is preventing supply blocks, which is really important. And Lüblix, he has two Adepts and one Mothership Core and only one Pylon. That is not very much. Oh, he's moving out with one Adept here. He needs every defense he can get. And there we go. How fast will he react? FIFO very nicely, nah, not quite avoiding the range of the pylon. The pylon attack just is called purify. Purify. Maybe I should I should Google what purify really means in German. He's fighting the pylon. That's expensive, but you can do it. The second pylon should not finish up. This or that not doing much here. The Mothership Core gets killed, pile, uh, the probes get pulled off the line, but it is enough with the help of their dead. Yes, the Concussive Shell is helping. Oh, he's doing a good job here, FIFO. I have to admit, that is dealing a lot of damage. But so many adepts. FIFO is on a timer here. Six adepts can kill this army quite nicely. Uh, Stim will finish up soon, however, and that might help, but FIFO's army is looking... If he can gather all his units and push out, then this might just be good. Good scan. Very good scan. And there you go, this adept gets killed. No, 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 uh, Connor, I think Concussive Shells is nice. There is there is this build where you go proxy 3 racks with one tech lab, double reactor, and you get Concussive Shells first in order to be able to kite against probes and adepts. And it helps out a lot. It, it hits so early that if you would go for stim, the push would hit so late that the Protoss is ready to defend it. So he will be prepared, but with concussive shells that lines up just way too nicely. So that's the specific timing where you go for concussive shells instead of stim or combat shields. Against Zerg, yes, if you would do the same thing as I think combat shields would be nicer. But yeah. To be honest, FIFO is quite behind in this game. He needs some miracle to root in order to catch up in this game. Uh, the war prism flying across the map might deal some damage. However, Lurblix doesn't know much. He's playing completely blind. There are no observer uh, out on the map spotting anything. But he's getting a third base. Just as FIFO's second command center finishes uh, morphing into an orbital command. So that is fine. Uh, yeah, the war prism is idling around. Just a little bit. Quite a lot, to be honest. The war prism could have been active for quite some time. Now there are turrets, so it's a little bit harder to, f to get in. Uh, maybe here would be a good spot. 
But it's it's not over. Oh, there's yeah, <laughs> there's the next turret. The war prism flies in now. Sees the turret, and yeah, you yeah, might just go here, warp in a bunch of adapts for adapt so far. There is the bio, however, and yeah, you need to lift. You might lose the war prism here. No focus fire on the war prism, and adapt shade into the natural, and they will kill a lot of SCVs. Five so far. They could have killed more. Six. Good focus fire. Seven. Eight. Getting a mule is nice as well. That was quite some damage. That was really nice damage here. Ooh, double Colossus production. Out of Lurblix. I think this Colossus can go out. Can outside of the of the main. Finally, FIFA going for Medivax. He's scanning, but misses. Okay, he sees the robotic spade. That's good. That is at least something. So he knows it is either Colossus or Disruptor. He goes into Viking uh, blindly. He's still on two base, and that is not good. Not good at all. So the upgrades for Protoss are not good either. It's 0 0. And FIFO got 1 1 eventually. But the big factor, he is on 2 base. So unless he can, he can kill the, the Nexus here, the third one, fairly soon, he will be in a lot of trouble. Economy wise. I do like the spread from Lurbix with the Observer. If you would get two more here, he would see quite a lot. I also do like that this Observer here will see the potential third base. However, FIFA could also take the gold base if he likes to, but he's going into a second, a second reactor. Maybe he will lift the main base to the gold base. And this can work out for a nice mid-game timing push. Where you then don't need to get a third command center. But still, I think he's on a timer. The, the income? Yeah, with the mules it's looking okay. But the Colossus are so strong. Oh, uh, don't run into the scan again. Ooh. Yeah, huge warping there again. Still, no upgrades for, for Lurblix. But the army supply is just way bigger. It all comes down now to the to how FIFA takes this fight. And Lurblix is fine. We do see the third command center now. Okay, that's that's good. But FIFA needs to do something. And I don't think attacking the third uh, is, is the way to go here. Three Colossus. And only four Vikings. There are some Blink Stalker and a lot of Adepts. This is just not how you want to fight here. Dropping would be nice. Dropping would be really nice. Lurblix chasing the army of FIFA. Ah, aggressive Blink forward. Wow. That was really aggressive. Okay, FIFA turns all around. Stims. Fights. But he shouldn't take this fight at all. That's a good position to fight. But he has just not enough army, and he's not using the factory. Just imagine some some Widow mines. They would help so much against the adepts. So much here. Or at least get more bio, more bio, more Vikings. See, FIFA is only on two medivacs, four medivacs, which is not enough. And this base, I'm not sure. The planetary is a good idea. But will he be able to hold it? <coughs> no way. It, get, it gets lifted. There are so many stalker now. The war prism helped out with the warping as well. And this command is just gonna die. It's so close. It will burn down. The position out of Lurblix is not really good at all. But all oh, the Vikings are not fighting against the Colossus. Hmm, missed opportunity here, but it doesn't matter, Lurblix just has too much, I guess, and one Colossus remains. The Concave 
did look really nice for FIFO. And with the better upgrades he could have taken this fight way better. It's so close, but just barely Lurplex has enough here. Just barely. That's, that's just way too much. There we go, GG! And Lurplex wins. Game number three. Welcome to my stream, Lore Games. Hope you enjoy. So let's just straight jump into game number four. And here we are on King Zhejiang Station, spawning in the bottom right hand side, playing for himself as the Green Terran it is, FIFO. And winning last game, only being one game away from advancing to the finals, spawning in the top left hand side of King Zhejiang Station, playing for the Drunken Outlaws. As the yellow protos, it is Liplex! And he likes his probe scout. So let's follow this probe again. That's awesome, Connor, that you can have a good stream quality here. If I get more viewer, more follower, eventually Twitch will allow you guys to choose the stream quality. So that's, that's the thing, if you get the, the gear or gear wheel or rack wheel or however it's called, uh, if you get enough viewer and follower on this stream, uh, this, this rack wheel, gear wheel, gear, however it's called, will show up uh, and then you can select the quality. Oh yeah. So you can adjust if you have bad internet for this day, you can go to mid quality for example and that definitely would help out a lot. But in order to do so, I need your help. Only you can manage to do this. So it's up to you all. FIFA this time not going with the three racks. He goes in with the command center. Okay. So gasless expand for FIFA again. It did work out quite nicely in game number two. If I remember correctly. So sure. Stick with what you know and what worked. At least sometimes. And FIFO scouting here with the SCV again. And might just block the pilot. Wow! Okay. It wasn't that intentional, I guess, but it was still nice to see. And this probe is moving out now as well. Why would you do that? Don't you want to have a Nexus? Ooh, Rex Engineering Bay. That is really interesting. One guess so far for FIFA, he's getting the early bunker. Awesome. An early bunker can definitely help. <laughs> Connor, you need Korean internet. You get, in, in, in South Korea, I guess, you get 100k internet for 10 bucks. And it is uh, VDSL. So upload and download should be 100k. It's, it's so amazing. And it's so cheap, it's, it's, that's really strange. And in Germany, Australia and all the other countries, in most other countries you have just really bad internet. And it's expensive as well, and I don't know why. Why can't we have good infrastructure for our internet? Esports needs it. I don't like the placement of this missile turret in front of the bunker. So if the turret tanks, normally the bunker should tank, but okay, whatever. And there is no turret in the mineral line here for FIFA as well, so if there would be Stargate opening, which it currently is not the case, but if, then an oracle could totally wreck this mineral line. Uh, 
And FIFU is skipping a little bit on his SUV production. He should produce more constantly SUVs. He's getting now some turrets. He's really... Wow, so many turrets. He's on panic mode, on full panic mode. But yeah, if you, if you look what he scouted, it's not that much. And there's no Reaper. He's completely blind. He just sees his space. And that's it. And that's not... You don't feel safe if you don't see far, if you don't see much. And Löblich sees a little bit more. He has the observer here, he has at least one watchtower. So that's that's quite something. So Stim is on the way, Starport, more turrets, FIFO! How many turrets do you wanna get? He has six. And he's going up to eight. Eight turrets. He's he's playing like like a paranoid mech player. This time Lurplex is going with upgrades, and I like that. Upgrades are so good as Protoss. In general, upgrades are awesome. But as Protoss, yeah, sure, definitely they can help out a lot. If you have the adapts with the Glaives upgrade and plus one, wow, the damage is really strong. They can dish out. And Twilight finishes up as well. We might just see the Glaives upgrade. Maybe. In so at some point? Maybe? In a parallel universe, Löblix got for some upgrades out of his Twilight Council. For now, he goes with additional gateway. Huge gateway explosion. Look at that. So with the plus one, we just might see an attempt to go for 8-gate uh, Adept Glaive's timing, but there are so many turrets. And if uh, uh, FIFO continues producing so many units out of his uh, three barracks and getting his upgrades as well, this could go really bad for Leoblix, if he commits to it, of course. There we go, Glaive's upgrade, additional gateways. He's, he's adding five so far. Going up to 7. Normally you want to go up to 8, I think. But it looks like... It looks like FIFO is well prepared. However, he chooses to drop. <laughs> this SCV. Nope, you need to go back to mining. Arbeit, Arbeit. Oh, he's flying right into the vision of the Xelnaga Watchtower. Oh... So Löblix knows it's coming, he should see it, and then you don't want to push out. Like, no? He is warping in, and he got a Mothership Core with full energy. There's a good scan, just barely misses the Stalker. Ah, one of them. So does he go in? No, he goes straight for the natural. Oh, that's such a smart move. And the Mothership Core is out of position. You might just see a base trade scenario here. Or at least some weird trading going on with the deaths. There is one sentry to block f with the force fields they're repairing. Uh, some stim went in and this nexus is toast. On the other hand side, no counter repair on the bunker. Nice stim here. The Marauder at the front gets killed. The Immortal stays strong. The nexus will fall. But so far, Löblix has enough at the front to win this fight. And he might just kill the command center. This un those units are quite idle, killing so many SCVs, the damage is huge, and Löblix has still this army, a lot of minerals, a good bank, solid mining, he can warp in a lot with the warp prism here, he goes up the ramp, no Venom Mines, no Splash, the supply depot is lowered, you go in here, oh, he kills the Mothership Core, that's massive, and oh, this Immortal is dishing out so much damage, just barely FIFA seems to be able to hold. If he only would not... Ooh, move command. Uh, pulling the SCVs now, he needs to do something. The probes get a good surround on this army as well. This escalated so quickly. The SCVs on this bottleneck getting killed as well. And there's not much to defend. For both player. But this immortal is so strong. How is FIFA gonna win this? Can he do it? Or will he be eliminated? The sentry falls. Never use the Guardian Shield, which is a huge mistake, but Lurplix holding strong so far. The Immortal finally gets killed as well after killing 14 units. 
And now we are down 3 SCVs against 8 probes, but we have stimmed units with plus 1 attack, medivacs, which all survive, and orbital commands with mules. Don't lose the immortal, the immortal gets healed, look at that, the healing is so strong, wow. Is it enough so? Oh, so close, but losing one immortal for 4 adepts is nice, and now Löblix doesn't have a good mining, his bank is completely depleted. He did warp in back at home. Uh, the warp prism goes back as well. And yeah, look at the income. It should rise by a lot soon. Lurblix with the four mules, six mules in total, four SCVs. Uh, FIFA, I mean. And wow. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> There's the income rising. 1,800. Over 2,000 now. In a minute, almost. So that, that's really good mining. And how is Lurplix gonna be... How should he be able to, to get out of that? I mean, he needs to get probes. And he needs... He can't just relocate the Nexus. He's playing Proto, so he needs to get another Nexus here, which is 400 minerals. Which he can't afford because he needs to make units in order to survive against the... Uh, Stim Bio. There are six medivacs. If... Yeah, there we go. Liberator. And with the Liberator, I think that should be game soon. There is nothing for Lurplix to defend against Liberator. The Stalker don't have Blink. And Lurplix can't afford Blink currently. I mean, he needs to get the Nexus first ASAP. Which he's gonna do now. That's good. Oh yeah, there we go. Lurplix sees it with the Observer. And now he should be like, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. He needs to defend this Nexus and get some solid mining. Seriously. Soon. ASAP. The Liberator did finish up now. And he will drop on top of this army. Not the best move here, but he just has enough. One attack upgrade is enough. Stim is good. There are no pylons. Nothing to, to defend here at all. And I think even with the pylon overcharge, it should not be enough. It doesn't matter. There is not enough to defend. The last ditch effort, warp in, six adapts. Yes, they are good, but I, I don't. I doubt. I heavily doubt that they will be enough. Uh, going for the core there. Trading out a lot of army. Okay. He should have just gone for the for the army there instead of the cybernetics core. But every damage is good damage. Now Lublix needs to warp in salads with, without. The zealot legs, the how it's called. Um, how it's called. I really don't remember how the upgrade is called. The zealot speed upgrade. Now uh, for to make the zealots into charge lots, charge, charge of course, yeah. So slow, <laughs> slow zealots against stint bio. That's that's not not good, not good at all. And those Marauder have concussive shells, which makes it even worse. They are the Liberator. I think Fifu just got this now, locking down this base. GG. And here we go into game number five. Yeah, it should it should be charged. So let me get a zip of water before I continue casting, please. Oh yeah, water, so good. Water hype! Okay, game number five. Whoever wins this game goes straight through to the finals. We have our new Gettysburg Ladder Edition, spawning in the bottom right position. As the yellow Protoss playing for the drunken outlaws, it is Lurplix! And his opponent, who just won the last game, playing for himself, spawning in the bottom left hand side as the green Terran, it is FIFO!
And he opens up with two barracks so far. Might even go into a third one. Without any gas. Oh, pro being annoying. SUV gets pulled here. And this SUV just might die. Ah, oh, this probe is gonna die now. Nice. So the barracks is delayed, but he killed the probe. And he might just get another barracks. Nope. Well, maybe. Nope. We don't know. He doesn't know. I mean, there's a lot of pressure on both of those. They are 2-2 two -two against each other. All those games were... Yes, most of them were quite close, to be honest. And not it's it's not a very one-sided series at all. So they know either of them, both of them could win this. And the pressure definitely is on. Definitely. Okay, double racks expand without any gas. I wonder if that is viable in higher leagues. It looks, however, really interesting to get that many marines and then they expand. Maybe that can work. Who knows? So Lublix is expanding, going for the second gas here. Nice. Very nice. Uh, Cyber Core finishes up. Adept gets warped in. Mothership Core on the way. Bunker for FIFO. And he got some gas, which he is saturating right now. He is skipping a little bit on his SUVs. He's also heavily supply capped currently, which is not helping out as well. But it's okay. It's okay. So now FIFA remembers. Oh, wait, I got an SUV here. Better scout for something. The Mothership Core doesn't quite attack it at all. So FIFA gets a full scout. Sees the dead, sees the additional gateways if you clicked it. And yeah, that's good usage of that one SUV. Tech Lab did finish, he goes for the eBay. And a uh, second gas as well. Eventually he wants to go for the second command center morphing into an orbital. So that would be helpful as well. And there we go. And he opens up with concussive shells. And that's really interesting to see. I would normally go with Stim if I don't want to be super aggressive early on. And if you go with a uh, natural base, you don't want to be aggressive early on at all. At least not with Marauder and Concussive Shells because of the pylon and the depths. It just gets countered quite hard. Normally. Oh, is FIFA gonna... No. Okay. I thought he would go for a third command center with that SCV. But that's not the case here. Instead he goes with the missile turret. Gateway forge. More gateways. Going up to four gateways. And here we see the factory for FIFO. So eventually he should go into starport. And of course then the medivax. And later on the liberator. I do like that Löblix went for the forge here and is now using it to produce, to upgrade the ground weapons to level 1. And behind that he's getting blink and that's nice. So if you go with blink then the weapon upgrade is good. If you would go for zealots with the charge upgrade then normally you wanna go with the armor upgrade. But because of the adapts you rarely see zealots at all. However, salads can still be really good. They are just a little bit underused. And I do think they are viable. Like the Adept is viable as well. But I, I do definitely understand why most people go with the Adept instead of the salad. And there's the Adept. Took one damage so far somewhere. Scan goes down, sees nothing, to be honest. No army, just some pylons, the nexus. Uh, there, that pokes in. There's the shade. Will he cancel it? Yes. So, starport and factory should swip, swap 
switch, switch, swap, swoop right now. And Löbling's going in with the third Nexus. The third Nexus is quite late to be honest. Wow, look at all those stalkers. He's anticipating a drop, which is currently not coming. And he doesn't... Okay, that's the only thing he misses. One that right here. Or, or an observer. That would be good. Come on. That's the only weakness he currently got, I would say. Or maybe something like here to know if, if uh, FIFA wants to move out or not. Uh, this scan is good, sees quite a lot, sees the Twilight Council researching, sees the forge. Uh, this time going with the ground armor level 1, it's it's okay. I would prefer the, two, two, uh, the plus 2 upgrade, but it's, it's good. At least he's upgrading something. Even shield upgrades would be better than nothing. Although you rarely see shield upgrades. Early on. Later on, yes, if you have the money, sure. But early on, not so much. I do remember, however, that, that many, or at least some, new player, uh, maybe not in Legacy of the Void now, but overall, if they play Protoss, and they, they are thinking, ha, I got this forge, and I can upgrade shields, and then they go for shields because they think the shield upgrade is also helping my structures to survive longer. And while that's true, um, it's just not that good early on. It's like you would go for the eBay and then fire up building armor instead of plus one attack. That's how it is for Protoss as well with the early shields. So those four medivacs full of stim stimmable units. Combat shields will finish soon in 20 seconds. And there is not much to defend. Where's the mothership core? Okay, two on, on the third base. Fifu is still on two base, so he needs to deal some damage. And he goes in. There's the stim. He doesn't quite get the mothership core. Fights into three photon overcharges. And this fight goes horribly wrong for him. Oh no. That did hurt so much. He could have taken this fight so much better and potentially win or, or ki just, just kill the base here. But because of that sandwich move and fighting into the overcharges, ah, he lost so much there. That's sad, but he might try it again. Oh, the observer sees the medivacs. Multi prong attack, there are stalker, however. Ooh, yeah, you can't drop into Stalker. Fifu is still on two base. There we go, stim in again, but this army is just way too small. And he loses one medivac full of units. That does hurt a lot. Oh, Fifu going with the ninja base, skipping the third position, going straight to the fourth. And this can trick Löblix. Aggressive blink. Doesn't quite get the medevac, does it? Mm, he should get one of it. Wow, that's nice. That's really nice for Löblex here. Well, there was a small attack here, killing some pylons, retreating back. Good damage. The Mothership Core is empty now, energy-wise. There's only, only one photon overtouch left. Oh no! Are you gonna lose this medevac full of form or order? That's so expensive! Ooh. However, this this could go wrong for Löblix, potentially. And it's looking like a decent trade for FIFO, but eventually, no, Löblix just overwhelming. In numbers here, has to retreat back. And it looks like Löblix might just be able to win this. He loses one Stalker. Blink Micro, not the best here in this case. Oh, Double Observer sees the Double Medivac. Those stalker are out of position, however, there are five more in this space. And this huge warp in, how many gateways are there? Eleven gates for Löblix. He completely skipped Robotech. He got one, but he isn't using it. He's, he's just like, nope, gateway only is working for me, and so far it is. Uh, but FIFA is going in with the 2-2 upgrades. 2-2 upgrades are really good, but he can't quite get there. And he will lose a lot here. He turns around, fights, 
get maybe three stalker. Ah, that that was also quite expensive. And Lüblix is now up by a lot, like 60 supply. Oh, wow. Okay, this base is a planetary fortress now, but okay, with two star, with two liberator, maybe he can hold. 70 supply up, and Lüblix got so much gas. If he would go into storm, that would be oh, this blink was so bad. He loses a lot of stalker in the process. That wasn't a good attempt at all. That did hurt so much. And he does have an observer. He should just use it to 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 scout what's going on. He sniped this the turret earlier, and now this bio is so strong. Army wise, it's looking not that great for FIFO, but he just takes some good fights. Aggressive blink into the liberator, snipes both of them, but loses a lot in the process. There, that's a move command instead of an attack command and even though he gets the medivacs and the liberator he's losing all his units and that's why you want to have at least some immortal with your army and later on splash he really throws away a lot of his army and yes he killed some liberator that was nice but now he's losing all the stalker for nothing okay so Let's see, Lüblix is on four bases. He got some solid income, but his tech is not looking so good. He got double stargate, and he's throwing down additional gateways. He never went into plus two upgrades. Okay, he got plus two there, but not two two. So now FIFO is ahead one upgrade at least. And there is no splash at all for Lüblix. And I think that's why FIFO is still in this game. No immortal, no splash. That's... That's not good for him. Oh, and look at that. FIFA just taking the island base. And you can do this, you can mule down heavily on onto this base. Just throw all the mules, he's taking another base here as well. Now FIFA finally catching up in, in terms of economy and upgrades and army supply. And if this continues to go like that, it's not looking good for Lüblix at all. Lüblix is going into uh, potentially Tempest, but there are not that many Liberator, only two so far. Welcome to my stream everybody! Hope you are enjoying the cast. So many Marauders, so many Marines with two twos, soon plus three attacks. And we just hit late game, there are no Ghosts currently, we might see some soon. But I wonder, will we see Tempest or Carrier? And both are not really ideal against a lot of marines, and there are a lot of marines. As Protoss you need some kind of splash. This war prison gonna get taken out, Liberator gets the kill. And it's it's difficult. Fifu is about to move out, he's now markering really nicely. Some idle worker here, some idle worker here, but still, he got the bases. And he is about to push out and hit a plus 3, plus 2 timing against 2-1. So if he hits that... Oh. The problem is there are no guardian shields, only gateway units. And you can't win like that. Most of your army is not fighting. He's move commanding so much! Oh my goodness! Throwing away all of his army. And maybe he just threw away his entire game. Right there. Dropping under 100 supply shortly. 11 more adepts get what in. He never used the Stargate so far. And oh yeah, that was a really costly misclick. Even if you wouldn't have misclicked there, you would have lost this fight horribly. Because of no sentries, no immortal, no splash. And not the best upgrades against this Terran. And those 11 adepts. He warps in 9 more adepts. But look how, how fast they die. Where's the mothership core? It's not here. Just moving down right now with the pile and overcharge. Maybe he can hold on. All the adepts, however, get killed. And the pylons just get killed as well. I think FIFO got it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's still out of position. This base is gone for sure. Uh, huge drop here in the main base as well. You might want to stim here. 
hitting on two sides, FIFO with the multi prong attack about to close the series 3 to 2. Doubling the supply now of Löblix. Very good position of his bio. The Debs can't get the surface they need to attack. And I think, there we go. GG. FIFA wins game number 5 and advances to the finals. Well played. Okay guys, I will start to cast the finals soon, but before I would like to say hello to Ed Crazy Jack, Blood Templar 1, Connor 5620, D for Dan, Holo Elmos, and FIFO, and Vifbot of course, my nicely Vifbot, who will greet you as well, and thank you for following if you want to. So let's go into the finals. The finals best of seven TVT. And we start on the weirdest map ever created. It is Darzan Station Ladder Edition. We have playing as the Green Terran spawning in the Left hand side -ish position of Darzan Station. FIFO! And he's playing against Team Kings. The red turn spawning in the bottom right hand side. It is Nemiator. We do see gas first out of Nemiator. And we do see <laughs> so far. Oh, there's the barracks. Okay, I was I was wondering a lot. Who I I I I, th I just thought that FIFA would go for command center first on that map, as he was banking up quite a lot of minerals. But it's 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 okay. It's fine. Completely fine there. So I made to gas first barracks and FIFA wrecks into gas. Double scout for both, so I mean both are scouting. This SCV will lose this fight. Oh yeah, that hurts. SCV for an SCV. Go back to work, please. And overall that is better for Nemiator. That is really good for him. So he delayed the barracks by quite a bit. And that is really good for him. What will we see here? The factory out of Nemiator and the second gas, as well as for FIFO, but he is not. He didn't mine enough so far in order to get the factory himself. So he's just sticking with the Marines. We should see the factory, however, fairly soon. Where is it? Come on. Come on! Or maybe not. There we go. So I would say Namiator is ahead so far, but he's playing Marauder, okay. He's playing Marauder. That is really strange, I never saw that. Marauder, very interesting, very interesting. And Hellion, okay, Marauder, Hellion, Starport. Maybe Liberator? It also could be Medivac. We don't know yet. Wow, this Orzadon is so big, look at it. It's so damn big. Wow. Almost bigger than the SCV. Almost as big as a as a supply depot. The Marauder kills the SCV, which was out there. The tech lab still only used for Marauder. There's the supply drop, missing a supply depot. But no upgrades, no stim. Ah, Medivac, look at that, Medivac. eBay, however, Namiator with a really interesting one base build so far. A really, really interesting one base build. Scan goes down, 
for FIFO and he sees what's going on. What does he have to defend? He will get a bunker to only 5 marines, that's not enough. But a tank might just be on the way here. Oh, but with the medivac? Huh, we will see. This, this is gonna be really good. Okay, so Namiator seems to go in, pokes in slowly, and that is completely fine. Yeah, killing one supply depot behind that getting stim, so that is really good for him. However, there is one tank, and so far Namiator's one base build did not the damage he was opting for. At least I think he was opting for more damage. The Viking could attack the Medivac, and yeah, Namiator is still one base. If FIFA can hold on long enough, he could be fine. He really could be fine. So let's see what is happening right here. It looks like FIFA is supply capped a little bit and Emiator is still on one base. Interestingly, the SV count is quite even. And the tank now attacking this bunker. I still think FIFA is in a good position. He should be able to defend this. So far, if he doesn't lose all the marines, that's considered a mistake. But as soon as the double liberator will be out, this should be good for FIFA. He might just get the medic. Ooh, you could have sniped it. Snipe it. Snipe it. Snipe it. Not gonna snipe it for now. And they made to going for the gold base. Okay. Oh, this medivac. Ooh. Ooh. This could deal a lot of damage. So the Viking searching now for the medivac. There are double liberator out, but this drop will deal quite some damage. But there are two tanks, and they might just both die, which will happen. And this eBay gets cancelled. Some SVs die, but so far not the biggest damage. Oh, the Marauder finding a tank here. That now it's good damage. For one medivac with some marauder. If they could get another tank, look how wow, this damage, wow. And Namiator is finding way more damage than than he should. Now the marauder, that that's the good thing about bio. It is so fast. You can just avoid the liberation zones. And wow, I can't believe how much damage those two marauder just did their 8 kills on both of them. They dealt so much damage. Killing 15 SCVs. The refinery will go down. And now with the gold base taken, Namiator is ahead. After being on one base for such a long time, now he's ahead. Awesome. A really nice Dazan station game we have here. It looks like FIFU likes his Liberator in this game. And they, they are handy, of course. They are quite good. But, hmm. Namiator again. With a small push out. Maybe he should just drop in again. The massive damage. The, the problem is, you can see on the orbital command of FIFU, he's not muling at all. Oh, but the Vikings finding one medivac kill full of units. That's awesome. And he's dropping on, on top of the marines here. He will clear this and maybe get the vikings. Ah, gets one viking but loses the tanks and the marines in the process for only one viking. Those three vikings did really good. Really well. Good damage. Uh, the liberator should not find any damage against those vikings however. 
Wow, look at the damage the Viking does against the Liberator. That's so much damage. 14 against armor, they are armor, they have 0 armor, so 28 damage for 2 shots, which is, yeah, like 1 attack. The Lancer Torpedoes, Torpedoes, against the Lexington Rockets. Okay. What is a Lexington? C can, you t can you tell me what, what a Lexington is? What is a Lexington? It's not the Higgs boson. That's what I know. Scan goes down and sees the gold maze heavily mining like dum -de dum -de doo I got money, blub 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 blub. Even though Namiator is behind in terms of army, like quite a bit, he is still managing to be fine in this game. And for now it looks like this game slows down just a little bit. Yeah, FIFO is not muling and you can you can see what this does to his economy. Yes, he's ahead in economy against the gold base, but if he would mule and get his gold base up himself, a third base, that would be massive. He is still ahead in army supply, but he's way too inactive and not muckering properly. And that's why he just... What was that mule doing? Wait, what? That, that's why he might lose this game. He got a good amount of Vikings. And oh, the tank not sieged. The concave is good for Namiator. The upgrades as well. 1 1 against 0 0. And now it's looking good for Namiator. FIFO tapping out. GG! Namiator wins game number 1. That game was really strange. So let's continue. And go into game number two ASAP. No. There we go. So. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in this best of seven. This time, game number two, Galactic Process, spawning in the bottom left hand side as the Green Terran down 0-1, it is FIFO! And he's playing against the Blue Terran spawning in the top right hand side, it is Team King's Namiator! I do think that FIFA could have won this game. But at some point his macro was not good enough, I feel like. And that's sad. He had the tools to win. So here's the SCV again being annoying. Oh wow! Looks like FIFA wants to fight. And he wins this one. On the other hand, he's idling this SCV, which might lose this fight. Oh wow. All those SCV fights early on. Namiator going in with the Reaper this time. So he opens up Reaper. That's fine. Which is weird. If you go gas first, normally you. Do you go Reaper? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's fine. Oh, a second barracks. Another refinery, we could see three Rex Reaper out of Namiator in this game. And on that map, that's not the worst decision at all. But there is the factory. Okay. Namiator should go with uh, Supply Depot soon. And FIFO is opening up Marines and factory play. So one base against one base. The only difference is the slight opening with the Marine. Slightly different, and the second barracks for Namiator against the 1 1 so far out of, of FIFO. Reaper goes in, and there are only two Marines, and the Reaper can take on two Marines if done correctly. He has a grenade, very well done, but now he's boxed in, and he will lose the Reaper potentially. Ooh. That. <laughs> that was bad, actually. You shouldn't. You, you should never commit with the Reaper going down here. And then you're boxed in and can't get out of the space because you can't jump down here. 
you can't. You can't jump down here or up, only here, here and there. So starport for FIFO, nice, a tank, so we might see tanky back. And that's command center for an emulator now. And those marines chasing the SUV, they will get it. Gunned down. Rip SUV. The base for FIFO will be later because of how we opened up. Uh, tank, supply depots of course, he might just go with... Uh, Oh, he goes with the Viking instead of the tank, uh, the medivac. Okay, that's very interesting. And for Nemiator, it is dim. Two one one. It's okay. It's it's good. Okay, interesting corner. Thank you for this knowledge. Very nice. So maybe, maybe in Kentucky and Massachusetts. Liberation is spelled big and that's why the Liberator has the Lexington Rockets because it's first it was first produced in those cities. I don't know. Uh, maybe some StarCraft 2 lore will tell us. I have no clue. Could be the case. But good Google work. Thank you Connor. Thank you so much. So the command center does finish for Emiator. Um, what is the... Do, do you see the stream? Yes, okay. Ooh, I thought I would uh, have lost with the overlay there. You have two tanks, one viking and seven marines against ten marines and one medivac. Two medivacs now. Oh, this tank is quite vulnerable. But... FIFO? Finding some good damage. Some really good damage. At least he's forcing this command center to lift. The command center takes some damage. Don't lose the Viking! Woo, woo, woo. Good control here. And just pressure on. If you would take those marines, the, those two tanks to the front, get more Vikings, which he is, and press forward, then he could do good. But there's the stim. And not enough to buffer. No split, however. So this tank takes quite some damage, but... Losing marines against uh, for a viking and a tank, that's a good trade. So an emulator took a really good trade here. And yeah, FIFA now needs to retreat back with his tanks. And he needs to produce more stuff. He's getting emergency turrets. Like I think he just did against Lublix in TVP. Will those turrets help, however? That's the big question. Uh, Terran medivacs can boost. However, they just use the afterburners. The tanks are not sieged. At least that tank is not sieged. But uh, Nemiator not committing here. Worker wise, it's looking very good for FIFO. And army wise, it's looking good for Nemiator. There is plus one in stim on the way for Nemiator, I mean combat shields. And so far, yes, no upgrades at all for FIFO. He never went for a tech lab on his barracks, so he doesn't have stim. Ooh, close pickup. If that tank would have shot as well, that would have been bad. Oh, good stim. Might kill both Vikings, and you don't want to lose both of them. Ooh, two Vikings for a medivac. Not worth at all. And I do like that Nemiator is out of the map. He is the aggressive Terran, he is the aggressive player. And normally in TVT, whoever is aggressive, as long as he doesn't overcommit and his macro stays solid, he wins. That's how it normally works. More missile turrets on the way. Still no stim! Uh, okay, and this is the explanation. Second factory. FIFO wants to make it happen. And this marine is so dead. Scan goes down, and Nemiator knows now, okay, I can't go in there, but maybe I can go into the main base. For now he's killing the destructible. He's not that solid with his macro back at home, however. Only building one SCV at a time, the other one just now. But he's the aggressive Terran, and that's the most important part. And yeah, for FIFA it is however mech. Mech. 
Making it happen. This SCV is so unlucky to die, but it's good for FIFA because now he sees the Marines. Which are taking out this turret. Oh, I like that move. That, that's not bad. If you could get the Vikings, you should not fight there. Ooh, massive hit. Wow. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> okay, big doom drop incoming. The turret gets remake, uh, remade. He scans and then he goes in, drops away from the tanks. Oh, what's with the mouse? There we go, into another turret. Losing one medivac but killing a lot here as well. Ah, this position is not good for, for Namiator. He's losing so many marines. And potentially all of his medivacs as well. Oh, that was expensive. That was really expensive. And Fifu gets himself another base. He should transfer some units back uh, to the top, get the gas. But, oh, that's so close. That's so close. Namiator almost sees this base. If he would see it now, he could cancel it. He could force a cancel there. Oh, welcome to the stream, Trusel, Sin Age 15, and Casper. A youth soccer team also somewhere in the US. Okay, so we got the explanation, f a potential explanation for the Lexington rockets. Ooh, fourth base for FIFO now? That's a bit. I don't know. He barely gets. Oh, the cancel! Ah, that really hurts. Ooh. <laughs> I, I still think FIFO got this at some point. If only he would get like up to five racks, get the gas and get the command center safely at home. You can lift it. That's fine. But Namiator, he, he's still, he's the aggressive Terran. It is 1-1 one, one against 1-1. One, one. So that's not, oh, the Vikings. Oh, nice. No, don't lose them. Ooh, loses one of it. Unnecessarily, but could have gone worse. Could have gone really worse. And now it's difficult for Namiator to go up here. How are you gonna approach this and, and push into a siege tank line? There are more siege tanks here. Only two siege so far. Namiator is looking for an opening. Oh, those Vikings are so vulnerable. You want to have your Vikings with your army, FIFO. Like, to grant vision and deny vision, so your tanks can shoot at the marines and the tanks while your tanks are safe. That is super... wow, that, that's dangerous. Namiator taking his base, while FIFO is saturating his third finally, which is good. There is a tanky vac right here, and he, he sees this turret. Oh, the medivac taking some damage. There are the Vikings, they all will get killed here. And not killing all the medivacs. There are two more Vikings coming right here, killing this medivac. Or maybe not. Wow, don't let it live. Okay, this tank is super dead. This medivac will survive, however. And Namiator just doesn't find an opening currently. But he gets 2 2 upgrades, and that is really helpful for him. The Medivac still survives up there. Wow. Another scan. And we do have some kind of stalemate here. But Namiator is still the aggressive one. He's containing FIFO, and if he can lock down FIFO on three bases while taking his fourth base and tacking up to something else, or just getting a bigger army, eventually he might just be able to win. I still think you should siege up those tanks. But how are you gonna. Oh, those Hellions. Okay. They see there is still this army. This SUV scouts for it. Look at that, FIFA has so much in his bank. He needs just to macro up harder. 
Macro, Macro, Macro! Why are you producing a marine? It doesn't make any sense. FIFO! What the frick? You're a Mac player. You should not even have the command center in your control group unless you play ghosts, to be honest. But okay, it's it's funny. So there we go. Mac with one barracks producing marines at a time. Those hellions, they could deal a lot of damage. Look at that. Four hellions in each mineral line. KK. Oh, and there we go. There we go. Blue flame hellions. At the same time, big attack. There we go. And the tanks are not ta siege, which is massive mistake. Sure, it's nice to kill a lot of SCVs, but... Wow, an animator just goes in, wrecks everything. And that's just looking way too good for an emulator here. But those units are heavily uh, uh, injured now. Oh no, the Vikings die. Helmets at the front, not getting through the wall. Oh, this bio is so dead. The Vidum, oh wow! <laughs> wow! How to throw away your army, part one. Just run in all your army, which is on low health, into Widow Mines and Tanks. But overall, Namiator did okay. He's up in Worker, army is okay, and he has 3 command center against 2. So, it is okay. And he traded quite decently, so while you can replenish your bio faster than the mech can replenish his mech units, that means it is not that bad if you trade your units. If, if a mech player lose half his army, that most of the time means he can't move out for two minutes. Uh, as a bio player, most of the time you have another nice force back at home which you can use immediately to push across the map. And that's the thing, FIFO now moving out with the tanks, but there's nothing to buffer. And like here you can get a massive surround, which is also not good for mech. And yeah, Namiator just got enough units here. There's nothing to defend. Only one tank, those Liberator are not helping. There's a planetary, if he can counter repair, counter repair, counter repair, counter repair! It's not happening. He's busy microing his tanks at the front here, loses the space, this space gets not even cancelled I think, and we might just see some weird base trade scenario, there are no medivacs with this army, just two now coming, and oh this open command dies, BAM! So it looks like if Namiator can kill this army, then that should be game. But can he do so? Can he do this? Tanks and Vikings are really strong. If he gets a good surround, this could happen. Oh no, this bio is so low again! How did this tank go up there? It gets shot down. Oh, good Stimmen, killing all those tanks. I think Namiator just barely has enough to hold here. And there we go! GG! Namiator taking game number two. So I will load into game number three shortly. Just let me drink some water. And then I want to mention, first of all, thank you everybody for tuning in today. And if you like, you can follow my stream and also go to my YouTube channel and subscribe there. I will upload the VOD of every stream I do there as well. There is lots of StarCraft 2 content you might check out, uh, Master Terran Gameplay, Master Tier 1, and I do free coaching currently as well, which you might be interested in too. Okay, so now we go into game number 3. In this best of 7. And so far, Namiator is up two games. Okay guys, here we are on Apotheosis Letter Edition, spawning in the bottom right hand side. As the Green Terran playing for himself, 
currently down. Oh, war, uh, oh, two, it is FIFA. And his opponent, who won the last two day uh, games, playing for Team Kings, spawning in the top left hand side. As a blue Terran, it is Nemiator. And he goes with Gas first opening, while Fifu <laughs> sticks to his Rex Supply Depot block. And we might just see another barracks thrown down soon. Fairly early STV scout out of Namiator. And every time Namiator manages to delay this barracks by quite a bit. And the center Supply Depot is open! <gasps> Okay, doesn't get quite in. There we go. Yeah, FIFA needs to do something. Something different in order to win this best of seven. <laughs> Being down 0-2 is pretty tough, to be honest. It is pretty tough. So the SUV of FIFA gets in. Scouts a little bit around, confirms the gas, and that's fine. For Namiator, we have a Reaper opening, and we should see a command center there. There we go. And a command center for FIFO as well. So, not a second barracks. Um, so, the early supply depot was the only weird thing, and FIFO is microing his SCV while he should produce more SCVs and drop down a mule himself instead. Oh, that's not good. The Reaper does finish up and is too fast. <laughs> Will miss the Reaper, uh, the SCV here because the Reaper is too fast. That's funny. That is really funny. So the Reaper jumps in and sees the command center, throws down a grenade, KDA charge. And this marine dies, and this reaper can deal some good damage here. Oh yeah, going for the SCVs. Killing wa- Oh! Not killing- Okay, killing the SCV on the command center. He wants to kill the SCV on the barracks. Really get it. Focus firing that one is really difficult. But he doesn't quite get it. And the barracks does finish, wow! But this reaper dealt some damage. Killed on the SCV. Uh, killed a marine. So that's good. And behind that, his command center is morphing into an orbital command. Wait, it's not called morphing, it's called upgrading. Yes. Reaper goes in, nice KDA charge. And eventually he might just go in again and kill this marine, if he wants to. So, FIFA going up to 5 barracks, still not producing the command center, which might lead into a huge supply call for himself. And now he's moving out. Wow, that, that random bunker with the cardboard star on it. Whoa, this game. Uh, FIFA seems really to be stressed out in game number three here. If he loses this, it will take a miracle for him to win this best of seven. And this Reaper dealt so much damage, the control of Namiator is really good. And now FIFA goes for a third command center. While for Namiator we do have Stim. It's like he plays the 60 medivac drop in TVT. And while this is not the best opening in TVT in my opinion, it can work quite nicely. Oh, no. delays the command center a bit, which is not the biggest deal. Oh, this Marauder is awesome. The Marauder is here. Marauder has more range than the Reaper. It is a little bit slower, however, but... St oh, this Reaper is so annoying. Awesome top out of Namiator. But there come the Marines. Nice. And now I understand this random bunker. Suddenly it's not random anymore. And we do see a command center upgrading into an orbital command. No eBay so far for FIFA in this game. There we go. <laughs> Just as I say it. And now I haven't uh, pre-watched the games. I haven't. I swear, I haven't. So yeah, Namiator going in with the 60 marine drop. There is potentially enough production for FIFO to just hold this upcoming push. But he needs something like tanks or widow mines or medivacs. And I doubt he will get it in time. 
I really doubt that. Richmeister, welcome to the stream as well. Hope you're enjoying. And there are the medivacs. Boosting across the map. If FIFO could hold this push, he would be able to get massively ahead because of the three command center he got. But he only has two Marauder and eight Marines against 15 SCV um, Marines and two Medivacs with Stim. And there we go. He boosts in on top of this turret, which is not completed yet. Stims in aggressively with the Marines. Kills a lot here. And there we go. FIFO knows he can't defend that as his army is out of position. He has nothing in this main. GG. Nemiator taking the 3 0 lead. Okay, guys, this could be the last game of today in this best of seven. Let's see who wins. We are on a match ball game. To be honest, every game from now on will be match ball. Spawning in the bottom right hand side, playing for Team Kings as the Red Terran. Currently up three games, it is Nemiator. And spawning in the top left hand side of Frozen Temple, playing for himself. It is the Green Terran, FIFO! Did I just say Nemiator is playing for himself? He's playing for Team Kings, of course. Ooh! FIFO with the double proxy? Ooh! What? So here are some SCVs. And they are chilling for now, but soon. Oh, this is so annoying. He needs to pull another SUV. He might just lose that one. And he will... Ooh, that hurts a lot. So this barracks is delayed by quite a bit. However, FIFO is going for potentially three racks in this game. So three racks is very strong. But there is no gas taken for FIFO. So we won't see Reaper, but only Marines. And normally you go with the Reaper. Ah, the SCV finally gets killed here. But this barracks still delayed by quite a bit. Nemiator is producing a Reaper, however. But he needs to scout that this proxy is happening. He needs to know. If he doesn't scout it, then <laughs> most likely he will have a very hard time holding this push. And this is completely all in, normally. So, can can Amiator win this game and, and defend? There is a Reaper moving across the map. And because there's only one barracks, which was delayed by quite a lot, there will only be out one Marine. So this Reaper could... This Reaper could end this game. Don't get me wrong here. This Reaper could end the game. And we did see Nemiator's good Reaper control in the previous game. And he gets the Marine. And kites back. Gets out again. And is fine for now. And FIFA is not constantly producing stuff. Oh, there is not even a full wall for Nemiator. He did skip the Supply Depot. Reaper goes in again, and this time there's no Marine to defend. This Reaper finds some nice damage. Oh, now needs to retreat. He's microing, however, and gets himself another Marine kill. Nice, but here's the push. Two SCVs tanking, those uh, Marines die. Five Marines, you will need to pull everything. Otherwise, it's looking really, really bad. The uh, Reaper dies. Oh, I do like that he attacks the reactor. He's also attacking the supply depot, which is not the main priority target here in this game, I would say. But the reactor is nice. If he would produce more units, which he currently is, 
maybe find some nice damage. The reactor is burning down. Yes, there we go. And with the CV pull and the Helgen coming up, Nemeator so far holds this. He's only behind two SCVs, but he has double orbital command. So that's good. And who? Oh, losing the Hellion and those two Marines is big. Fifu now has another opportunity to deal massive damage. And yeah, Nemeator pulls back the, Marine, uh, the SCVs. He needs to lock down the ramp, I think. And get somehow a good surround on those Marines. Which he currently is not doing. He's producing a marine at the time. No hellions, no widow mines. Lifting one barracks there. Which is taking massive damage. And he needs to defend somehow. But one barracks production against three barracks? That's not good. There comes the CD pull. Good stutter staff from FIFO. He's dealing massive damage. W comes down. Now he stops microing. And loses all of his marines there. But he killed some more SCVs in the process. And more and more units are marching across the map. This barracks might just burn down. He gets on top of the ramp. Oh no, move command! That does hurt so much. But still, FIFO... Ah, he can't quite close it out. He's going for a command center himself and some tech behind that. And that's good. Oh, move command again. Oh, FIFO is in a really good spot. He might be able to win this game. And he needs to win this game if he wants to continue playing in the finals. There's a tank coming. And maybe we will see uh, Medivax. But for now it's the reactor. On the starport. Nemeator going up to, I think, five barracks, which is good. The position of the barracks is a little bit questionable. But at least he's getting it, so... That's not, that's not too bad. More marines are coming in now. Opting for any damage. I don't think they will find much damage, to be honest here. But... Nemeator pulling the SCVs, which he doesn't really need, and he's losing quite a lot of SCVs here in this process, going down to 19. Yeah, he lost, he lost 18 SCVs so far. Okay, so those Marines will definitely die. So what is Shifu doing here? Tanks, Vikings, and one lonely marauder marching across the map. Okay. We'll run into the entire army of Nemeat and get killed. Uh oh. Will we see some smack talk? For now it looks like no. So... Nemeator opting for the count with the counter attack for some damage. But the Hellions don't find much damage. There are tanks in position as well as Vikings. Uh, Nemeator might just get one barracks here. Which oh no the barracks survives. Oh wow. If he repairs it, yes he repairs it. Does he repair it? Repair the barracks, not the SCVs! Oh, there you go. Whew. That could have gone wrong, to say the least. That really could have gone wrong. <laughs> so the game slows down a little bit. Namiator heavily supply cap, just not throwing down some supply depots now and another base as well. So that's good. Uh, but yeah, the supply cap definitely hurting him currently. I do like that FIFO is going into some add-ons finally for his barracks. He could go up to five racks in this game. That would help as well. 
So, yeah. What are the upgrades currently? The upgrades only stim for Namiator. Very interesting. So this game is still completely open. There can... Oh, nice! Finding two Viking kills. That's massive. That really is a nice catch there. One medevac to heal them all. Namiator is behind in worker and just barely ahead in army supply. And there are no tanks for him, no tanky vacs so far. Which is a big mistake in my opinion. Pure bio in Legacy of the Void normally loses very hard against bio tank. But Namiator is doing one thing nicely, and that is he's containing FIFU again. He's putting on at least some pressure, so that is really good for him. And now he's macroing up three uh, SUVs at a time. FIFU finally getting stim now. And he needs that. He's moving out and finding this army out of position. Not dropping on the tank, however, so... Huh. This can still go either way. Uh, that stim was very st uh, strange. But here we might just see... No, maybe a big attack! No, 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 no. Those armies passing by. Not doing much here. And I think that's that's fine. That's completely fine. Still no tanks for Namiator, but he's getting another command center, as well as FIFO here. I think FIFO got a huge army, big enough to potentially win a big fight and catapult him back into the series, if he manages to win the next fight. Which he could. And there we go. Dropping the tank. Stimming in. And Namiator looking to go for the base trade. But he has no tanks and that's the big problem. In a base trade scenario normally you want to have some kind of splash. And that's exactly what happens here. There is splash. The turret is shooting as well on the Medivax. And there is not enough stuff. For Namiator, he drops on top of the turret while losing a lot back at home. He gets the tank, but that's it. I think just FIFO got enough to win this game. It's looking really good. There we go. GG, well played. And FIFO takes game number four. So he's not out yet. He might just be able to get this done. So let me set the score first. And here we are in game number 5 this time on Frost Leather Edition. As we have spawning as the Red Terran in the left hand side, left bottom hand side of Frost. Playing for Team Kings, it is Nemiator. And his opponent, who just won the last game, spawning in the top right hand side of Frost Leather Edition, playing for himself as the Green Terran, it is FIFO. Good. So FIFO not going out 4-0 in this best of 7. He had enough. He's like, no, I am not gonna losing again. Not gonna lose again here. I'm fighting. Wow, this this wall. It's so weird. But I like it. It's 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 interesting. And stuff like that, 
I mean, normally you see so, uh, it uh, as, as out of a Protoss player, but never out of a Terran. Maybe in TVC, but not on that map, normally. Still going with the block, FIFA loves here with the supply depot. And, oh, nice save on the SCV. Really nice save. Cool stuff. Cool stuff we see in this tournament so far. I do like it a lot. So the Marine gets this SCV kill, taking some damage, but that's fine. There is a Reaper on the way, however. Why would you go with the Reaper? Like, what? what? You just scouted where your opponent is. Why would you go with the Reaper to the right hand side? It's not Protoss. Oh, there you go. Interesting. Very interesting. So this add-on is super vulnerable. Super vulnerable. Did I forgot to put on some music? No, okay. So here comes the Reaper against this injured Marine. Oh, the grenade. Wow, oh, the grenade hits. Wow. That, that was, wow. Just amazing. Oh no, don't box in your own Reaper again. Please. Be careful with your Reaper. Yeah, nice. So the Reaper might be able to scout later again to see what's going on. FIFO could go with Mac. He tried once and he wasn't doing too bad to be honest. So he could try to go for Mac as well again. But for now it is three racks production for FIFO. And Namiator is sticking with a 2 one, one. So he might go for the 16 marine drop like it is done in TVP and TVC in this game. And yes, it can work. So let's let's just check, wait and see. Oh wow, the Reaper went in again. Not bad, not bad stuff at all. So goes in, kills another marine. That's good. And yeah, behind that we see Nemeato going with the stim. Oh, if he could get the fresh mule, that would be massive. But he doesn't get it. Needs to evac ASAP. That's that's fine. Yeah, and FIFO, maybe this time he will be prepared to fight against the upcoming potential drop. Which might just hit massively. You never know until you faced it. And even if you do, it can be so bad. But I wonder, it doesn't look like Namiator will be able to hit this timing. He's heavily supply capped. His orbital command was late. Poo! He only will have 8 marines instead of 16. With 60 marines he might be able to win this, but only with 8? I... I doubt it. I really doubt it. I don't think he can do it. Doubt. So there's the medivac. Whoop whoop whoop. Only one so far. That still can deal some damage, but uh, turrets well placed turrets and you shouldn't drop into here as well as both turrets can attack then there are turrets there is some army but let's see how much damage this drop can deal there we go boosting in into the next turret dropping oh wow well that was bad <laughs> however this marines manages to kill two SCVs there, wow. There's another medevac with only three marines. It looks like Namiator is running out of steam. 
after winning the first three games. It's not looking he can... yeah, he's maybe a little bit tired. You have to imagine those guys normally don't play that much StarCraft. And the tournament went on for six hours straight. Sure, there were some breaks, but still, that's a lot. And those guys are only gold platinum. So that means they potentially are not used to play six hours straight StarCraft 2 in a tournament situation as well. And yes, FIFA got so many turrets. He also gets a lot of supply depots, very well done. So he is not being supply capped there. That is also quite nice. And there are the tanks again for FIFO. While it looks like Namiator is skipping tank production completely. Just playing bio and this time his bio force is so small. Oh, lift fast. Oh, no reaction there. Losing that medivac full of units. With, uh, against our Bioforce without them, that hurts. That really does hurt. FIFU could deal a lot of damage with this push. There's a tank. Stim just did finish up now. That's really helpful. So maybe... Maybe he can deal a lot of damage with this push. We will see. He... Goes in, checks the potential third base, there is none. He might just drop those units into the main. There we go. And there is not much to defend. Drop it. Drop it! Drop both medivacs! Come on! There you go. And drops the tank behind as well. And that's awesome position for FIFO now. Kills the structure there as well. And the boost on top of this army, the tank is tanking quite a lot here. I think FIFA just has enough to kill this army. And yes, he clears it. Enough units. Wow, GG! Will we see a sick comeback here? We just might be witnessing something big here. Okay, here we are, game number six in this best of seven. On King Zhejiang Station, spawning in the top left hand side as the Yellow Terran playing for Team Kings, it is Nemiator. And his opponent spawning in the bottom right hand side, putting up a very good fight, winning the last two games. Can he continue his comeback? It is the Green Terran FIFO! So what will we see out of those guys? There's the SUV coming. Oh yeah, Nemiator wins this SUV fight. Or is he? No, he's not! Or is he? Yes, he is! Oh wow! Wild. Very wild game. So, oh, the barracks is delayed a lot again, which is not good, it really is not good. But it gets killed, wow. Three wrecks opening for FIFA in this game, okay, against... Maybe three wrecks as well? The command center is late for Nemiator in this game. So that's one thing he might want to fix. There we go. Yeah, this, this barracks is just so early. Maybe a little bit too early. But who knows? Who knows? Could be fine. 
And there we see the factory coming down for an emeator. And this three racks, it is with a gas just being taken now. Okay. So I don't know how much damage this three racks opening for FIFA can do. But this time this Reaper should not get that many kills. It is three racks. There are a lot of marines being produced. We do see attack lab on the way. And if those marines are on position, which they sadly currently are not, but they, they could be, then that would be nice. Reaper jumps in, throws in the KDA charge and goes out again safely. Just taking some damage, but here's the combat drugs. And those are so good that the Reaper regenerates life quickly while out of combat. Don't take drugs, kids. Don't do it. Even if they sound funny, look funny, smell funny, or taste funny, don't take drugs. Please, just don't. Even if they would regenerate life quickly out of combat, you, you should avoid drugs. Stim packs, combat drugs. I don't know what's with, uh, with uh, the human race in, in the future, in, in the StarCraft universe. It's so strange. Drugs everywhere. Drugs and explosions. I don't know if I th should think that's a good thing. Those six marines should not win against those two hellions. But lined up like that. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, no, oh. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, they get maybe one SCV. Yes. And they forced the lift off. Wow. I didn't think that would happen. But okay. So the three ranks for FIFA working out quite nicely so far. Cool. Really cool to see. Oh, but that position of the Hellions is not the best. Losing both supply depots would be bad as well. So an emiator almost being supply capped. He needs to replace those losses somehow and now going in with splash the splash is huge and he clears it not too bad loses two hellions and a marine for Ile and two two supply depots and a reactor okay so fifo dealt some good damage he's up nine worker his command center is on the way as well and he's getting another barracks, another factory, a bunker to be safe, an emulator scouting for proxies, but this wasn't a proxy. Not at all. Crazy Jack did rank up. Nice! <laughs> I don't know what this level stuff is for, but I just take it as it is. So that's that's that. And crazy Jack with the cuppers. Don't troll my stream. My stream will punish you if you troll too hard. Ah, Double Reaper goes in, throwing two grenades, and they get safely out. Wow! Wow, that should normally not happen but it did so wow yeah Namiator he never replaced those supply depots he is heavily supply capped he doesn't have enough energy yet to throw down to call down a supply drops there's a starport now finishing up for FIFO and overall FIFO is looking solid in this game number six so while Namiator looked amazingly strong in the first three games suddenly at at game number four he, he began to drop in his performance and if FIFA continues like that and Namiator as well we might just see the sickest comeback of all time there is a drop heading towards the main base and it's a strong drop a very strong drop. Six marines and two reaper, but 
So many turrets! So many turrets! The medivac finds its way in. And that's good. There's not a lot to defend here currently. Oh, this medivac! So close to die to the turret. But he's finding a lot of damage. Now the turret kills the medivac, but not before killing a lot of SMEs. And now it's even! That was the... Oh, that grenade. That was the damage Namiator needed to do in order to be even again. And now it is even. The upgrades are looking okay with Stim and Combat Shields against Stim and Combat Shields. No eBay so far for Namiator, while FIFA is not using his eBay. And FIFA is a little bit supply capped, which he's fixing right now. Big push out with Nemeator, a lot of Hellions and some Bio, but there are tanks which are not sieged. And that's a mistake, you wanna siege your tanks. Come on, siege your tanks, they are so vulnerable. You can relocate them with the Medivac. Oh wow, oh no, oh no, is that really happening? What? Is this really happening? He just might see a base trade. And yeah, Namiator scans now sees... Wait, there is no army. Is he going in? Oh, uh, wow, this command center, he needs to cancel it, which he does. Good. A second scan just to confirm that there is nothing. You can go in, Namiator, you can go in. And FIFA parking his army on this watchtower. What? Third command center on the way for animator I like that move is he dropping ah he's getting some hell bats oh wow this this small force you need to retreat there are no tanks and it's still two base against two base at least for now however there's a third command center already for an animator an animator going for the drop he needs to do something he he ah oh, you had time so much time but there now there's the push out and Emiator again, no tanks. And he's still idling around here. Can he win this fight? Oh, we are base trading, guys. We are base trading. Tanks not siege, but... Oh, the splash from the Hellbats is real. Pulling the boys. Wow, the tanks on top of the production. And this tank dies. The bio stays strong for Emiator base trade. Pulling all the SCVs, but this... It's just too much bio for the SCVs. Well, this is just too much bio as well. This game is so crazy. Who will win this game? FIFA or Nemiator? So far, supply-wise, it's looking good uh, for FIFA. But this can change quickly in a base trade scenario. Yeah, both play on top of the production of each other. One command center did die. Um, Nemiator evacuating now. While FIFA is still sitting in his base and markering as best as he can. If he can kill both orbital commands and get a Viking out, he might just be able to win a base trade scenario. But how it's currently looking? Not quite sure. I'm, I'm really not quite sure. Could still go either way. Oh yeah. Hunting for the for the command center. He finds one, and that's good. Uh, Namiator never went for the SVs here, nor the upgrades. He's moving down now. There is a small bio force. Good kiting and stutter stepping, but he loses some units in the process. The turret kills one medivac. That is massive. You need every healing you can get. And yeah, this command center might burn down. This one is idle here. And FIFA is coming back to defend. And he's still producing. That's the thing. Yes, killing the orbital command is nice, but as you are not producing, you want to prevent produ uh, production from FIFA. And it looks like FIFA just might have barely enough to win this base trade scenario. Namiator evacuating here. And FIFA boosting behind. Oh wow, this one HP Marauder! He is a sergeant, he has seen shit man, GG, wow! And FIFA wins game.
number six. Okay, guys. And here we are. Game number seven in this best of seven. Match ball, the last game from today, for today, can't even talk anymore, but I get through it. We have spawning in the bottom right hand side of New Gettysburg Leather Edition playing for Pro, no, playing for Team Kings. It is a yellow Terran Nemiator, oh wow. And he's playing against the green Terran spawning in the bottom left hand side of New Gettysburg, playing for himself, it is FIFO. Cheer up for your favorite. Who do you think will win? FIFA or Nemiator? Both guys won three games in a row. Who can win this best of seven? Spoiler alert, it will be a Terran. Double barracks opening for Nemiator. Early scout for FIFA. And only one barrack so far, but double gas! Ooh, maybe we might see some tech. Banji play, for example. Could be the case. Or maybe some proxy. This is not a scouting SCV so far. So far, it's a proxy location SCV. What is this SCV up to? I can't tell you because I don't know, but it has to be some kind of proxy. Soon there will be enough gas, or is it only for scouting? What? Wow, that's really strange. Wow, so the factory goes up in the main base. This is really just a wow, a scouting is really an emulator, three Rex Reaper on. Potentially the worst map for it. You can only jump up here and here. And mm, mm, the rush distance is. Yeah, it's quite something. But maybe. Maybe this strategy can work for him. You will see. Oh, a fourth Rex going in. Full NA. Full all in. So far. There's the first Reaper. Attacking the supply depot, taking some damage, don't lose the reaper! And the reaper dies, ooh, ooh. The first reaper is so important to not die. And now an emiator did commit a lot to this, so he needs to stick with it, at least for some time. Okay, three reaper. At the front. This game could end any second now. Who will win? Reaper jumping in. Ah! What? <laughs> what? That grenade. Oh, don't lose the Reaper. Ah, throwing all those grenades was a huge mistake. He could have killed so much there. He, he still could do it. Oh, he loses another Reaper potentially. No, wow, that was so close. But he kills a, a Marine. But now there is a tank out. Oh. Oh, tank is out, and we might just see a Banji here for FIFO, and it would be such a smart move. And there we go, Banji, cloak Banji. There's nothing back at home. The grenade's not hitting anything important. Getting a Marine or two, yeah, that's nice. But now there's a tank, and, and you can see the tank covers almost everything. You can move up the ramp, or, or jump up the, the cliff, and there are the Marines. Perfect. This cloak Banji could be the game changer here. Yep, and now he's committing with the with the Reaper, not killing too much. He's taking a lot of damage unnecessarily. He needs yes, he needs to deal damage here, 
but now he retreats back, maybe? I don't know. Scan goes down, sees no turrets. Fifu will be so happy with this Banji. Ah, eBay. Good. But will it be in time? The first bench is out, not moving across the map. There comes down the scan and sees everything. Sees the position of the tanks. And those Reaper, they could find awesome damage against this tank. And they do. But there's the Banji and Reaper can't shoot up. Yes, they are faster than a Banji, which is interesting. I mean, this is a flying unit. Normally planes are faster than people, but not in StarCraft 2. Jetpacks are too good. And yeah, the Banshee is cutting off the reinforcement. They will kill so many Reaper here. Now, there will be turrets, but Namiator is still only on one base. Producing a lot of Reaper. There is a second tank. So, still one tank here and... Yeah, killing the Marines is nice. Those Banshees seen a lot of damage. FIFO doubling the supply of Namiator now. And, oh, if he could get this turret, that would be massive. Can he get the turret in time? Yes, he can! If he can kill this turret... No, he cannot, and he's... taking a lot of damage here. Wow, that was so close. Another scan. And with the... With, yeah. It's nice to get supply depots. Namiator was su seeking for any damage he can find here. Against FIFO. But it's looking so tough. Ah, the turret dealing good damage here. Killing a Banshee. Even killing a second one. Nice. Turret good unit. Turret really good unit. But still. It's not looking good for Namiator. This supply depot will get taken out. And then it will... Supply crap, Namiator. And yeah, all those Reaper. How many Reaper did die so far? 13, and there are 10 more to die. Against 3 tanks? How do you want to win this? How? Oh, the grenade in your own Reaper. There's the Banshee. Mm, the Supply Depot just was killed as well. Namiator not giving up in this best of 7. In this last game. But how do you want to transition out of it? He could try. He's producing more and more units. In his in his barracks. While he could just throw down a command center and try to macro yourself out. It would be a hell of a hard time, but potentially possible. But not with FIFA taking a third base. Oh, this is looking so damn difficult. This is looking so difficult. I don't know how Namiator is... would be able to win this game. I really don't know. I can't tell. He goes in again, there is a tank. Grenades are good, but it's just too much FIFA here. He loses all of the Reaper. And eventually FIFA will just move across the map and win this game. I do think that, that this game is over. Look at all the mules. Four mules at a time now being thrown down. So it is three base economy soon against one base. And yeah, going for the tech lab, okay. Four barracks. The, the, the time where he could still micro out of this bad situation, I think this time is gone. I really do think. <laughs> yeah, the Ds would be awesome, but he doesn't have the Ts. He only doesn't have, also doesn't have Ultralisk. He's playing Terran. Battlecruiser! He could go for Battlecruiser. Battlecruiser is good against all those tanks. Two Battlecruiser against eight Marines and five tanks. He could win this. Battlecruiser hype, but it's very unlikely to happen. Very unlikely.
He's gathering his, his uh, units. He's going for Stim, a factory as well, still on one base. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, planetary fortress. Awesome stuff. Awesome. And FIFA now with the turrets. Turrets everywhere. Turrets, good unit. He has only six so far in this game. Ah, there we go. Two more. Going up to the eight he loves. Eight turrets. And I don't know how Nemiator wants to supplement five racks, one factory and one starport out of one base economy. I really don't know. And FIFA is doing a nice job. He knows he's so far ahead. He could be a little bit more active. It could have been the case that Nemiator would go for a 3 command center and macro up hard, be super greedy. It's not the case in this game, but it could have been. And then FIFA, because of his passiveness, of his passive playstyle, could have allowed Nemiator to come back. But no, that's not happening here. Nemiator is still on one base, producing a lot of marines. If he would have the sickest splits, the best micro, and he could take out this army, then he would still be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> let's be honest here. <laughs> let's let's be honest here. Uh, I, I think even Bian would have had a hard time winning this game from this situation. So there are the SCV scouts. They will die. Oh no. Don't don't do this. Oh he doesn't see this army. This Benji dealing a lot of damage to this barracks. And there's a planetary fortress with the Ibex cannon. How do you... How, how... No, no chance. So the tank is not sieged, but that's... And he goes back! He got two medivacs now. Uh, but nothing to defend here. There are Vikings as well for FIFA, so... Uh, he pulls everything. Everything dies here. He goes around, goes in, sees two tanks, which he can potentially kill, but he's taking so much damage. In the meantime, FIFA killing everything, floating to the base here, to the island base, okay. But there is now one medivac with eight marines. And the medivac dies, the marines die. The base dies, everything dies, Nemeator down on 6 supply against 105. There we go, GG, well played, congrats, smiley face. And FIFO wins this best of 7 final and the tournament. And he wins also the 1 hour coaching. Awesome. So congratulations to everybody participating in this tournament, it was, a, it, it was a lot of fun. I hope you did enjoy the cast and I'm gonna go off now and taking a break. So thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoy, see you next time, have a good one, bye! Hey oh there, thank you for watching. If you'd like to support me, simply hit the thumbs up button. Do you have any wishes, feedback or suggestions, put them into the comments below. You may also subscribe if you're new to the channel. I wish you a wonderful and stress-free day. Take care. Bye-bye.